Okay, now that we have seen how a for loop works with uh, a list, let's concentrate just on the for loop for a little bit for this lesson, just so we can get a grasp of what other features or how, uh, what other manners of uh, things we could do with a for loop. So let me clean up what we have here. So I'm just gonna delete all this. We're gonna start from scratch. You run this as empty, this is what you get, okay. So, let's do a simple for loop, just like we did with before with a range, okay? So something like this. So for num, some number, in range, and then we're gonna set it up to five, okay? And we're gonna print num every time. So let's see what this will yield. Okay, so give yourself some seconds to think about what this will get you. So again, let's run it. There you have it, zero through four. Good, that's one variation. Let's do another variation of a for loop. If we wanted to, let's say, not start necessarily at zero. Let's say we wanted to start at two and end at five. Okay, so we want to display a count starting from two to five. Can we do this? So yeah, the answer is you just need to manipulate again what you have between the parentheses. In range, and this time you're gonna tell it, I wanna start at two, comma, but this time you put six. Okay, so why? Because six will not be included. It will go from two to five. And let's go ahead and prove that. So print num. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do here is comment out the first for loop so it's not interfering with what we're doing. So by just putting a pound sign in front of it, right, or a hashtag, it will make those two lines comment. So let's go ahead and run this for a second. As you can see here, we go from two to five. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and hashtag this again. And this time I want to decide, not only I want to start from a certain count, but hmm, I would like to space it out by a certain number, right? So it's not necessarily, let's say we wanted to go from two to 29. Well, you know, by doing what we just did, we could do two comma 29, uh, 30 and we're done, right? So it will print one at a time, but we want three in between. All right, so let's try that. So for num in range. So notice now the major difference. Now you're gonna have three arguments to the function range, starting at two, reaching 30 or 29 in our case, at a three, separation between the counts. So let's see if we get that. So print, and we're gonna do none. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. And there you have it, starting at two, add three to it becomes five, add three to it becomes eight, add three to it becomes eight, 11, et cetera, until we reach 29. So this here, you can decide what your resolution is. This here, you decide what should be your range lower bound, or the lower limit, inclusive, 30, exclusive, okay? So I hope this was a good quick review for that. So let's go ahead and redo, uh, since we are with lists right now, let's do another example with list. Let's call it names equals, and then we're gonna put some names here. And this will be a good review uh, for handling this. Um, Drew, Janet, John, and Bob. Okay? All right, so can we step through all of this using a for loop? Yeah, the easiest way to do this is simply like this, for maybe name, that's what you intend to pull 
or each item within that list is an actual name. So name your variable according to that. In names, so that's the name of the structure or the data structure you have here, which happens to be a list, and then print name. Now let's see how this behaves. And there you have it. So each line, it will print a name. Okay, uh, can we do it in a different way? Yeah, uh, so if you want to use range, well then you'll have to use the index. Okay, so let me just comment this out. Again, this is one way to do it. We're going to do another way to do this as well. And the way to do it here is um, uh, for you could index. It's based on the index. In range. Now, how many items we have? Now, we could say four right away, knowing that we already have four. Or we can ask the function length, len, give me the length of this list, names. And then we'll do what? We'll go ahead and print each name. Now, let's make it a little fancy, name, like this. But this time, names index. You are basing it on the index. Okay, let's see what happens with this. And there you have it. So name Drew, Janet, John, and Bob, but we're using this time the index.